If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Our guest today is Iris Houseman. Iris started off riding. She became a bit interested in dressage. She also had a brief interest in cutting before returning to dressage. What we're going to talk to her today about is some research she's been doing, some equine research into clicker training and the importance of timing between the click and reward. But first of all, we want to find out a bit more about her. How are you today, Iris? I'm very well, Glenys. Thank you. How are you? Good, good. Okay, Iris, you've heard some previous episodes. Now, you know that we normally start off with a quote. What have you got for us today? I've got one and it's, without ambition, one starts nothing. Without work, one finishes nothing. The prize will not be sent to you. You have to win it. Mm. I thought that was sort of a good one because you, if you want something or you want to achieve something, you have to put the effort in and have to work for it. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. And everyone likes to get a prize. Yeah. <laughs> so long as it's a positive one, a nice one, not one that's a bit negative. But, yeah, everyone wants that, but they've got to realise that you've got to have that goal, that bit of an ambition and also work towards it. Now, Iris, just tell us a bit about how you started with horses because you're from a non-horsey family, aren't you? Yes. I got introduced to horse riding at a, um, a birthday party, actually. I think I was quite young. I was about six and we all got to ride a horse. And from that moment, I was hooked. And then, yeah, I wanted to start horse riding. And then I started at a local riding school. And I rode there for a few years. Mm-hmm. And then when I was 19, I had a bit of a gap year, so I went travelling and I came out to Australia. And there I got introduced to the cutting sport. Um, I groomed there for a cutting horse trainer for about six months. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed that. I got introduced to a bit of a different way than training. I guess it was a bit uh, more non-traditional and it sort of got me thinking more about training. Yep, yep. Yes, it's very easy to ride at a riding school where all the horses are quiet because that's their job is to be quiet, you know, to take beginners around and sort of going from the beginner onto that next step can be a bit of a jump for some people. Okay, now when you first rode, because you said at a birthday party, um, can you remember walking into the riding school and thinking about, you know, what you were going to do or how you were going to ride? Do you remember that, that day? You mean the first ride yeah, at riding school? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I still remember that. Yeah, it was – I was like – because they start off with, like, private lessons before they put you in a group. Sure. So, um, yeah, I was like – I think it was a grey little pony I got to ride and on the lunch line, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. loved it. Good, good. <laughs> and even, they even asked me, and they were like, oh, are you sure this is your first lesson? <laughs> I was like, yeah. So, got hooked, yeah. got hooked. Because a long, long way to go from there then to a career with horses. But if someone's going to start off with a career with horses, what sort of core skills or character traits do you think they need to have? I think you, you definitely have to be willing to put in the hard work because it's not always easy, especially if you um, – I worked on a few yards and it's, you know, it's long days, long hours, and you really need to have a passion for it. Mm-hmm. I think if it's not your passion, I don't think it's going to work otherwise. But, yeah, if you're willing to put in the work and show interest, and yeah, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, I think, you know, when you think about the work that is involved, a lot of people do say, oh, I don't think so. You know, you've got to have that passion. Otherwise, there's sort of no reward. What do you think the best thing is about working in the horse industry? I think um, you come across a lot of different people, Mm -hmm. which I always always find interesting and I like. Yeah, and also a lot of like, a lot of people have different ideas, which is, you know, fine and, and really good. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, everyone has one thing in common and that's that everyone loves horses and they want the best for their horse. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. That's right. That's right. Because people do have different ideas. I mean, you know, you're talking about going from dressage to cutting and then back to dressage again. That's a huge gap, huge difference. And just different horse management styles and different riding styles, different training styles. But that common bond of you know, having something to do with the horse. I mean, the horse is, is still the same, even though the different breeds and types, no matter what, it's still a horse. And there's a lot of common bond there, common traits with people. Because you talked about the best thing. I think the best thing is the horses, the people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What about 
people who've influenced you in your career, you know, to get you to the stage where you are, you know, you're doing the research and you're doing the training with the horses, but who's influenced you, who's helped you along the way? I definitely think it sort of started with my first grooming job as um, at the cutting horse trainer. Mm-hmm. I think that because that sort of got me thinking about training Yep, and like see it from a different perspective. Yes. So, yeah, and then when I got home, I was kind of like I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I was I was going to open days at universities and all that. And then I came across the bachelor degree I just finished. Mm-hmm. And I also my family really encouraged me to do it, even though they're non-horsey. Mm. They know that I enjoy it and they can see that I, you know, I have a great passion for horses. Yeah. So yeah. they, they yeah. encouraged me to, to, why don't you go through that? So, yeah, I started uni and then I did a first placement in Texas, which was at another cutting facility. Mm-hmm. And that trainer influenced me as well. He gave me a lot of opportunities. When I got there, I got sort of my own horse there mm-hmm. to train with. So that was like really, really amazing. And then later on, one of my lecturers had a had quite an influence, uh, Sandra von Ewald, she um. She was in the third year, she was my supervisor for my mini teasers, mm-hmm. which is sort of your preparation for your teasers. And then she's also my teaser supervisor. Yep. yep. And Andrew also influenced me, Andrew McLean. Yep. He helped me with my research as well. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. They, and they're good people to, um, yeah, to help you. What about the horse that you had when you're in Texas? Tell me a bit about him because you really enjoyed working or her. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she was called Miss Pris. <laughs> okay. She was a paint a paint mare. It was always really funny because a lot of people thought she was still really young, which she wasn't really, but she was owned by the trainer and his wife, so and they didn't really have much time to work with her. Mm-hmm. She was a really sweet mare actually and quite really like um willing to work and so um what the trainer showed me was basically like I mean she was already started obviously, but we still went over that process a bit. Yep. Yep. She hadn't been like ridden for a while mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. um yeah i start working with her i did uh, lots of groundwork and riding okay. and that was really good it's like it's nice because i had quite a bit of freedom with her like you know sometimes yes. when you for that experiment yeah 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 it's sometimes i mean when you do right i mean especially not on a professional level right horses for other people you always always you have to consider the owner which is not a bad thing but mm-hmm. you know it's easier to just sometimes discover things a bit yourself if you have a bit more freedom in yep. training, I yep. reckon. Yep. Yeah, it was pretty really good. What do you think your proudest moment's been? Um, I think maybe my graduation or the process that okay. led to it, especially because I, I did my research at the Australian Equine Behaviour Centre. Mm-hmm. And besides doing my research, I also worked there as a working pupil, which was a really good experience. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like obviously hard work because you have to, Work sure. five days a week and then still do your research. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed it because it's it's two different things. Like during the day you're out there doing practical stuff, and then in the evenings and in your spare time. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I think the yeah leading up to that, and then also I think presenting at the conference because you know as just as an undergraduate for me that was yeah good quite good. yeah a good experience. Do you think that was your biggest challenge? You know, having to do the prac work during the day and then you know, write up your research at night and things like that? Or what do you think your biggest challenge has been so far in your career? I guess it's not a biggest challenge. I guess it was challenging. Like, mm, I mean, mm. I could have just said, no, I'm just not doing this. I want to focus on my thesis time. But this was such a great opportunity and something that I really wanted. Yep. And I was actually surprised how well it went because I, I did prepare Good. myself for, like, oh, this is going to be hard. But I actually think it – because it's two really different things, like mm-hmm. – yeah, I think that's why it went so well because it's like what I said, you do practical stuff during the day and then, yeah, we're in the evenings where like, you read more and you mm. you, you write, write more. So it's it's two really different things. So I think that's why it worked so well. And really focused because that's the environment that you're in and you're not getting pulled away from, you know, sometimes when people are at home, they get pulled away from their family and their, their other friends and, you know, everything else. If you're in an environment where you can really focus and say, this is the main priority yeah. that I'm here, it's, it's quite good. And everyone, yeah. everyone was also like really supportive as well. Like you're yeah. in, you know, obviously you work with people that understand like, um, mm-hmm. have a, yeah, Standard, Good. and then I did give myself a little bit of time to obviously finish it when I was home again. Yep. Yeah, just to 
Yeah, tell us a bit about, you know, because we want to find out. I mean, you know, we're talking about clicker training. So if you can just briefly describe what clicker training is, um, but then then we'll start to talk about the importance of the timing between the click and the reward. So if you can talk about clicker training first, just briefly explain it to us. So with clicker training, it's a form of positive reinforcement and you use a little device which make a very distinctive click noise. Mm -hmm. And that is followed by a treat. So the clicker at first is like it doesn't, it's a, a secondary reinforcer, which it doesn't mean anything unless it's coupled with the primary reinforcer, which is the food. Yep. So yep. Um, so if your horse, say, does something and you think, oh, that's good, I want you to learn that, that's when you click. Yeah. But the click followed by the reward, because if you keep clicking, the horse just thinks it's just another background noise, but the click has to be associated with the reward. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it does, because otherwise it won't, yeah, it won't mm. mean anything. Mm. It's the same with, like, if you would say – to your horse, are oh, a good boy, or if you don't couple that with another reward, such as like a scratch or, or yep. a food reward, it doesn't mean anything to the horse. Like, yes, it's just yes, a, yes. Um, and why clicker rather than good boy? It's interesting. I think it's also like uh, the clicker, it's it's always the same, like it makes the mm-hmm. same noise. All the yep, like, so, so you've got that consistency. Yeah, so a horse learns to look for that consistency within the reward, within the response first. Yeah, yep. it's just, just yeah, because it's it's always the same sound. Like if you if you do use a voice cue, it does sort of always need to be in the same. Yep. Set, yep. set in the same way, like in the same tone and voice. And interesting too, because you can always know a horse that's been trained with the clicker. You know, you just press the clicker, and all of a sudden they prick their ears up, and they might even start <laughs> salivating or licking their lips or something. You know, they yeah. So it's it's interesting to see. There are quite a few horses around that you know have been clicker trained but you recognize that they know it straight away yep oh hang on a sec let me interrupt to let people know about the horse industry qualifications at onlinehorsecollege.com if you have a look at the flexible options there's online theory and the practical components can be completed by video or with a qualified expert in your area that website again is onlinehorsecollege.com okay thanks Now, just to do with the timing, so we had some, you know, just to do with your research, there was some that there was an immediate response. What was the other, about five seconds and 10 seconds, or what was the, what was it? Uh, 10 and 20 seconds. Okay, so there was an immediate response, 10 seconds and 20 seconds. So just tell us a bit about what was the best result? Was it the immediate, the 10 or the 20 second delay? Well, I might first, if you don't mind, tell quickly what we Exactly done, so yep. people maybe understand it a bit better. Yep, yep. Um, so what we did is horses needed to touch a target with their nose, and once they did that, they hurt their click and got the food reward according to what group they were in. Also, like the horses were like we we hold them like they had they were like in their paddocks, but we hold they had a halter on and we hold them in a lead rope, but like loosely. Mm-hmm. They were not like not really constrained or anything. So. The horses that were in the immediate group, so when they touched the target, they hurt the click and then got the food reward immediately after the click. And then the horses in the 10 second group, when they did show the correct behavior, they um, hurt the click and then we waited 10 seconds before they got the food. Mm-hmm. And then the same for the 20 second group, but then they had a 20 second delay between the click and the food. And we found that Horses with immediate reinforcement scored better compared to the 10 seconds and the 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because we did see, still see a few results with the delayed groups. There was there are two horses in the 10 second group that passed our reach criterion, and there was one horse in a 20 second group that passed criterion as well. Was there any indication that the horses that passed the criteria had been trained previously with the clicker? No, they were all naive to click your training. Okay, okay, yeah, um, yeah, yep, yep. they were used naive with this, but mm. yeah, it was an interesting outcome. And obviously, like we had, it was a it was a pilot study, so it was yep. a very small study. How many in each group did you have? Five in each group, mm. but but even five, you know, five. They all five. If you had the results with five, and then only with two, and then only with one, it's still a fair indication. In the immediate. 
Yeah. The immediate group, there were four that passed. One didn't pass the criterion, which was also okay. interesting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it certainly gives you enough then to go on and um, do some more work with. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So at this stage, the studies show that the quicker the reward, the quicker the horse will yeah. learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole delay thing, I mean, sometimes people say, oh, my horse went really badly today. I won't do this. And it's sort of like an hour later. I won't stay and give him any extra grass or he can't go out in the paddock or he can't, you know, do this. They, they don't get it, do they? It's got to be the immediate no, response no, no. or as soon no, as Dave, possible. No. Yeah, 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 good. With any reinforcement, also with, you know, with it doesn't matter either it negative or positive reinforcement, or it should be, yeah, as quick as possible. So your release or your reward should be followed up Soon. straight yep. after the horse yep. shows the correct behavior. But, I mean, it doesn't mean like, I don't know, it, I mean, it would be interesting to definitely test different time intervals as well, like mm. that are a bit smaller, so maybe three seconds or five. yeah. And and then do it with a bigger group, yeah. Yeah. Iris, have you got a book that you could recommend to our listeners to complement their training? Yeah, or well, I think it's not really a horsey book, mm-hmm. but I find it very interesting because it's called Are We Smart Enough to Know How Smart Animals Are? Okay. And it's written by Franz de Waal. He's a Dutch-American um, primatist, so he does talk a lot about monkeys and apes, and it, it pretty much talks about all sort of animals and I think it really gives an interesting view on um yeah that every every sort of animal has is is sort of smart in his own way I reckon mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um you gotta understand you know when it when doesn't really matter if you train horses or dogs I think it's, it's important if you have an understanding of their behavior and a little bit of how they learn and yep. what their limitations are so yeah yeah so the more research that's done into what they can learn and the more research is done into what the what their limitations are, it's still going to be better communication, you know, between horses and humans or horses and, and sorry, animals and humans anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it also shows that, like, we ourselves are also limited. Yes. Like, yes, you know we are. I mean? like, yeah. So, so that's yeah that yeah. I, that's interesting aspect too and mm-hmm. and it also depends on the animal like you know it also talks a little bit about tool use and all like mm-hmm. that was very interesting as well because that's also very species specific yes so yeah. um, yes even though we've got you know a, a huge frontal lobe you know we can't see as well as some animals we can't hear as well we can't swim we can't you know we can't do lots of things as well as some animals yeah, like we can't live in some environments that animals can. So we've we've certainly got our limitations. Yeah. Iris, what are you looking forward to now? Have you got any more research? Are you going to go through now and do more research into this? Is that are you going to expand on that? How does that work? I might do. Um I'm starting a master's degree in animal science in September. Mm-hmm. So I might be able to expand this research for my um master thesis. I'm thinking of doing that. Okay, good. Um, good. But, yeah, that won't be for a while, so <laughs> festive to get. Yeah. yeah. When you've um, done that, it'd be great to hear from you again and um, just see how, you know, if you came to the same conclusions or different and, and then if you broke it down to the three seconds and five seconds and had more horses, you know, it just gives us a better insight into how horses learn, you know, what their limitations are but also how they learn, which is good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Iris, can you just in a few sentences summarise your philosophy with horses? You know, just summarise a bit about what you've learnt about them, what you think about them and, you know, maybe what you've learnt with the research that you've done. Well, I do believe it's very important that you have an understanding of where the horse comes from. So understand its behaviours and its needs. Like I think it all starts with good husbandry, you know, as well. So uh, make sure you, you tick all the boxes for what, what they need, you know, like nutrition-wise, movement-wise, all that sort of stuff. And then in your training, I think it's important to have a little bit of a basic knowledge of how animals learn or horses learn. Because I think if you do understand, have a bit of an understanding, I think you it's easier to, to see what goes wrong and why it would go wrong mm-hmm. if something goes wrong or why it would go go right why something works yep so yep. I think um, those things are are really important okay okay all right that's good now Iris how can people contact you if they want to um, talk to you a little bit more about this they can contact me through my email 
which I think you're going to list on the website, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we can actually put these <laughs> contact details on horsechats.com slash Iris Houseman or just go to horsechats.com and search for Iris. Okay. Okay. Iris, thanks very much for talking to us today about your research. I think if you can continue on with that and, um, you know, we've got a bit better understanding then about the timing between the click and reward or just the timing and the, and the release and, you know, just to do with all the training, whether we're using a clicker or not, you know, and how quick it's got to be. It's been great. Great talking to you. Thank you, Iris. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks for having me. Oh, wait. Before you go... If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below. 